things would never be built on time. <laughs> Can we give a big round of applause for the children of Matilda Marks Kennedy School? I particularly like the traditional coloured sea Israeli pioneer break dancing in the middle. <laughs> a bit of history for you. So many Jews in one room. I mean, it's like Carmel's Bakery the night after Pesach. <laughs> or a Barry Manilow concert. But what I want to know is how do you get so many Jews in through so few doors? I mean, did you know there's no phrase in Hebrew for polite and orderly cue? It's amazing, really, I mean, considering the number of Russian immigrants to Israel. I think when they get on all the pan, there's like a special course in how to push and shove. So I've been asked to tell some personal stories about Israel, although I don't really know where to begin. I only came to see girls dancing in military uniform. <laughs> you too, Rabbi Cohen. <laughs> and how do I push up those short attendance figures? I, I've been a member of most of the Jewish youth movements at one stage or another. I've worked for about half of them, been kicked out of the other half. It's just great to see so many people here today. Did you go to the ex exhibition outside? I love it. I mean, you can tell it's a Jewish event. Everyone's got full plastic bags. Nobody has spent a penny. <laughs> By the end of the afternoon, it got so fierce with all the competition, people actually haggling over the free JC stress balls. What I did like was this, uh, this thing I got from the Jewish Police Association. It's a kippah. It's, it's very subtle. I think it's like a challenge. You've got to walk down to Wembley Station and see if you can get there without being noticed or beaten up. But, but the police are doing a wonderful job. Can we have a big round of applause for the police and the CST? <laughs> this year has been very remarkable for Middle East peace in North London. The United Arab Emirates airline recently paid £3 million for the right to name Arsenal's new stadium. And what's going to be in the new stadium for the next three years? Electronic billboards promoting Israel as a tourist destination. <laughs> Absolutely serious. So Arsenal would love you to visit Israel and they would love you to book through United Arab Emirates Airline. <laughs> Homolis are still in negotiations. What will it be, sir? Chicken, beef or jihad? <laughs> Israel. It's amazing. I mean, where do I begin? The birthplace of three great religions. The most disputed territory in the entire world. The only country to win the Eurovision Song Contest represented by a man who is also a woman. <laughs> Dharma International, there's a job for a Jewish boy. I mean, that's commitment. When she sings, she really sings. When he has a brick miller, he really has a brick miller. A cut above the rest. I mean, it's one way to hear the high notes. Israel is one of the world's biggest exporters of technology. The Givun company developed the world's first ingestible video camera. It's so small, it fits inside a pill, you swallow it, and as it's travelling through you, it films your lower intestine from the inside. It's very creative, just a bit messy trying to retrieve the tape afterwards. Okay, my Israel. Snapshot one. My first trip. Do you remember yours? I know all my school friends were going on normal summer holidays, or with the scouts, butt linens, rugby club, barefoot great crushing in Potter's Bar. I was going on a five week intensive leadership course to the Middle East with the Federation of Zionist Youth. It sounds like Golden Mayer meets Star Trek. We arrived at 4 a.m. awaiting our first Israeli sunrise, the sight of the blue skies. The sound of the dawn chorus, the smell of 5,000 chickens. All I did for my first three weeks in the Holy Land was collect eggs and try to look after crazy Israeli kids on a summer camp who are all high on tartrazine. They're like lining up for their orange juice squash shots every day. Hit me again. That was the summer I was inspired to become vegetarian and celibate. Snapshot two, yeshiva. I was supposed to be inside for about a year or so. I got out after 10 months for good behaviour. And one day I found myself in the old city of Jerusalem. A guy came up to me, he said his name was Moses. He'd just been up Mount Sinai, spoken to God, and he was tired from the walk. 
Now, this is actually a recognisable psychological symptom where people think they're a messiah or a biblical character, and it's called the Jerusalem Syndrome, when they think they're speaking with the word of God. In Israel, he'd be considered mentally ill. In London, we'd elect him mayor. <laughs> Easy target. Snapshot three, driving. You know what it's like. I was going to hire a car in Israel, so I thought I'd get some practice before I went. I took a very long, slow two-hour drive through Golders Green on the right-hand side of the road. Amazingly, I didn't hit anything. The snapshot four, my wedding to a beautiful Israeli soldier girl. Okay, it hasn't happened yet. I haven't actually met her. But Israeli women are the most beautiful in the entire world, aren't they? Although, I've always been too intimidated to ask one out. I don't know, maybe it's that luscious olive skin tone. Maybe it's those nonchalant Middle Eastern eyes. Or perhaps it's the high-powered automatic weapon over her shoulder. <laughs> I'm Marcus Freed. You've been great. Tadarabalakem, chad sadeh. My great pleasure, and Rabbi Cohen was no doubt, to welcome back the IDF Entertainment Troupe. Let's hear it! Okay, fantastic. Awesome. You heard it here first. Right. Have a nice one. <laughs>